Hi everyone, before this episode of the Lim Kopi podcast starts, I would like to address something that has been on my mind lately. The past eight episodes of the Lim Kopi podcast have been a joy to really produce. Listening to the past eight episode guests, their passions, their their lives and also as well as what the future really holds for them has been really great to listen. And despite the original intentions of the show, the engagement of the series has been really underwhelming. And I kind of recognize that already. So as a result, I will be changing the guest-focused format to a central topic format. This is done so as an attempt to engage our audiences better. So, if you have been sticking with us from the very first episode all the way to now, I would like to take this opportunity to really thank you guys for really sticking with us. And as well as if you have any topics that you want to recommend to us, uh, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section below if you're watching from YouTube and as well as leave a DM to us at the Lim Kopi podcast on Instagram. Without further ado, let's enjoy this episode of the Lim Kopi podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Lim Goopy Podcast. This is Season 2. I'm your host, Gok Kao, and this podcast is brought to you by Sequentia. This is the show where I invite my guests to talk about our work and life experiences and as well as our memories together through a Lim Goopy session. I think I'm just very grateful about you know how Season 2020 or season one, we call it as. We have done seven episodes already and I'm very thankful for the positive reception so far and all the constructive criticism that I received through the Instagram channel and YouTube comments and uh, wherever I receive from. I'm very thankful for this and uh, for this season, for season 2021 or season two, we are having 10 additional episodes and we are starting out with this episode and I can't wait to see uh, how this season is going to play out. All right, let's introduce today's guest. Despite scoring badly for his primary school living examination, Wilson has triumphed over many obstacles to be a junior art director in a design consultancy firm. His keen sense of direction and aesthetics has allowed him to create stunning motion graphics pieces for both local and international brands since graduating from motion graphics and broadcast design in 2017. All right, Wilson, how have you been? I'm very good. Uh, COVID has treated me very well. Uh, Seriously? Being a a snowpock at home, just sleep away. No, (laughs) just kidding. You work from home for the whole year, basically. Yeah. So how was 2020 <coughs> like for you Especially now uh, I mean this year Okay As of recording this episode It's uh, December So by the time you're hearing this It's already January now, Which is next year Which is 2021 already Yeah correct um, But how has 2020 tr- Has been treating you so far Because we been working at home mostly right Yeah 2020 has affected Not just the economy Every individual's job prospect mm-hmm. as well uh, everybody should know that we are working from home so we need to change in terms of how we can approach our work lifestyle you know okay. meeting our friends or whatever not uh, so personally for me it's to me it's not too much of a drastic change but because as a design design background in terms of our, our industry we work through computers so mm. we don't naturally have to always sit in unless we have to if we have to go and meet clients uh, so for me it's all right I can still work from home day to day basis uh. Yeah. In terms of working from home, right? How is your discipline working through home so far? So like do you find yourself more productive or do you find yourself less productive? Do you procrastinate a lot especially? Actually, um one of the main uh problem that you mm-hmm. actually brought up for working from home, uh, you would actually procrastinate more. For for me, la, that's how I feel la, because mm-hmm. you, you are tend to be in the more relaxed zone. Yes, you you don't have someone or, or people there to stress you out about 
what you do or what what are you gonna gonna your next step to be moving forward lah. Mm. So you tend to lose out on this whole motivation here and there. So yeah, you just need to find ways to pull your back, pull your pull yourself back up again lah. Yeah. Mm. So I'm 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 assuming from what you have mentioned is. It's been productive for you, lah. Yeah, yeah. Of... In the in the end, it is still productive, lah. Yeah, mm. you have to be productive, lah. End of the road. So, have you been catching up on shows or like or anything like with friends or whatever during, like circuit breakers, like true virtual? Hey, Zoom? by law, ah, cannot catch up with friend, ah. Anyhow, this got how? No, no, I know. Thing, I, I, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I I don't mean like in person. I mean like no, through no, no. Zoom meetings uh, and that kind. Yeah, meetings. We have meetings from Google Hangout and all this ah. stuff, lah. Yeah, but um. Meeting of friends for this whole year is it's not a lot lah. Really, it's not a lot. We can't really go out lah. Practically, so it's more of our internet, yeah, mm-hmm. calls and all this lah. So, what are you looking forward to the most after this whole pandemic is over? Oh, definitely, I want to travel. I believe everybody want to travel as well. We want to travel out of mm-hmm. Singapore because Singapore is is a place where it's just uh being being. Isolated in part of the Southeast Asia country, <laughs> <laughs> we want to get over Singapore, you know. Yeah, but Singapore got a lot of places to travel, especially. I mean, now that we have the hundred dollars voucher thing, so where do you, yeah. how do you intend to spend it? That's one hundred dollars. Just recently, yesterday, I saw the news of the hotel that okay. is being um crowded by all the all the bookings lah, mm. the failures and all not, but. The, the the end date of that is until next year June. So yeah, June. for now, I I don't see a plan to to hurry and rush it to use yet first lah. Will you be spending on yourself or will you be with family or friends? Definitely with uh, family. With family. family. Yeah, okay. About yep. Great, great. I think for myself, I'll be spending with my either with my my parents or probably with my friends as well Because mm. we we're thinking about staycation, but the problem about staycations is that it's only up to five people. Yes, and correct. And in Singapore, the Hotel rooms are a little expensive, I would say. Mm. Yeah, but hey guys, if you want to go stay K, look at your HDB. You're paying like three, four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> you you planning to do so many renovation, then you use hundred dollar go stay K. Oh. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Well, <laughs> staycation. Cut this off. Cut this off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But, but I think my point about staycation is that at least like you have a hotel room, then people will serve you. Like at least the room is very nice. Yes, comfortable understand. bed. Go for a chillax uh, stay Yeah, yeah it's, good. it's good for the mind, especially. It's, it's good for the mind, mm. I Haven't been one since my birthday at that time. That time my chalet was. I think th- I th- I consider that as a as a as a as a staycation. I would say I would, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's move on to our go yes, let's go let's segment, go. and this is the segment where we talk about our stories of our favorite drinks, and of course, short this show, as you can tell, we'll be drinking our drinks throughout this entire show itself, lah. So tell us, uh, why do you pick this drink, and uh, is there any story behind it? Oh, why? So why? Sh- why did I pick uh this drink? Mm. You can see uh soy soy soya bean, cause it's the it's the most natural product that you can find soy bean. And it's very cheap lah. Mm-hmm. You can just drink anywhere. You want soy milk, whatever. You can buy a kopi tiam, buy it at a cold storage, fair price, anywhere you can find. So, and it's slightly more of a healthier drink with not uh, not much of a sugar content in mm. it lah. So we try to be healthier in a, in a way. And I, we love soy drink, man. It's since young, everybody drinks it all the way. Yeah. Oh, so it's part of my lifestyle. The <laughs> funny thing that you mentioned about sugar is that we were at the supermarket prior to this recording. Yes, correct. So you're mentioning about you wanted to buy um the carrot juice. Mm. Then you were just just comparing the nutrition facts mm. from the back of the drink, which is was from this and the carrot juice itself. And you said the carrot juice was so much more sugary than this. Mm, correct. So I don't know how accurate this fact is. <coughs> um I tend to avoid um all these kind of drinks, lah. Mm. Not the soya milk. Soya milk is still my favorite anyway. Mm. But typically, like some fruit juice, chocolate milk, or that kind. Sometimes, uh, the sugar content mm. is as good as drinking this kind of drinks. Yep, correct, correct. So, it's like whether you are die early or die when, lah. So it's like eventually uh, we will still die, lah. Just that uh, you want to die happily or you want to die sadly. <laughs> you know? So that's that's another choice. We, we're not trying to be morbid here, but <laughs> but I mean, just putting some context here, lah. It's like um. I'm I'm still a fan of drinking all this like fruit juice, like yes, yes, things yes. that is like more soy based. Like I'm still a big fan of all this, but I usually would prefer to mix my own uh I prefer to blend my own fruits. Mm, uh. Definitely. Each to our own lifestyle. Yeah. yeah la, because yeah. I think when you do that, you're able to see like the fruits yourself. 
Yes, definitely. You know what you're adding. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when you, I'm not saying that all brands does this or whatever. I'm just mm-hmm. saying that, uh, you may not know what they actually put in. So mm-hmm. it's always good to like what Wilson did is to see the nutrition facts now. Mm-hmm. So at least mm-hmm. you know what's in the packaging yes, correct. itself. Correct. Rather than you blindly go and buy them, wondering how come so sweet lah. So mm-hmm. there's always things they add in inside. Mm. So for myself, I picked out uh F and N grape. Mm. Um. I have been a big fan of all this like grape or orange or whatever they put inside. But grape is always the 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 go-to uh, sugar drink for me for at least uh, carbonated drinks wise. Mm. Mm. So uh, for friends who know me especially, I'm not a big fan of carbonated drinks because it's very gassy and all that. But I think once in a while, I do have my... Um, I close one eye about it. And Today he closed his eyes. He's drinking... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, uh, F and N grape is just my go-to drink, lah. Usually, mm-hmm. I will drink it at either buffets or restaurants or whatever, mm-hmm. or like just once in a while, just by drinking something that is gassy. Then, yeah, it's probably this. Mm-hmm. I do have another one which I might introduce in the episode myself, but this is the usually the one I drink in, lah. So, la, okay. so let's do a cheers, lah. Cheers to twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one, even though it's twenty twenty for now, lah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay. Um, let's go on to our main questions of the day. <clears throat> As usual, I always ask this question to all my guests. Mm. It's a it's a it's a preset question, really. But, uh, do you still remember how we first met? We did all of us. Like, we met. I mean, both me us, and Kokhao yeah. met during polytechnic times, lah. Basically, okay. but then if you want me to ask about detailed, wow, let me think. Uh, how how did I kind of remember? How did he really? first met we met each other but i never really talked to him yet you know in school mm. you know like when you just join school you have a lot of friends around then you, you just need to mingle around mm-hmm. but he was at the after stage and i start to really talk to him mm. yeah uh if you ask me my first not say first encounter maybe my first interaction of you was mm. during freshman orientation Okay. Yeah. Then that time, I think I was talking to you uh, about how you, um, like the oldest among all of us. Like not say oldest, but maybe oh, one I remember of the oldest. Already. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think like we are comparing ages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This the this the my first so called experience with mm, you. And then okay. we are just comparing ages, and then like uh, in case you didn't know, we did our own batch in the diploma course itself. He's actually one of the more older kids, uh, in. <laughs> in, the, in the whole poly course uh, in the whole so course uh, yeah. I naturally in the course itself I kind of like look up to him uh, as mm. like a I would say like a big brother at first but maybe more towards a late stage maybe more just like a like a, just a bro uh, or maybe like a, mm. a a friend or a mentor or whatever uh. but I think at the at the very beginning of it um, I see him like a very wow this this, this very old already how come still in poly mm. uh, why is he still in poly and mm. I'm sure you have a very interesting thing, uh, interesting story to talk about that mm-hmm, later on. Mm-hmm. But I think my first impression is like, how come this guy's so old one? Where has he been gone to? Because uh, I came from a background of academics. So mm. people went through Express, the NA, then they go through Poly or they go through mm. JC and all that. I really never uh, have people that I met through ITE. Mm. So I think you're the one, one of the first few people that mm. I met is from IT background. Mm. So I think that has really changed my perspective of IT. Mm-hmm. So I think later you can, we can talk more about that later sure, on. Sure, sure. Yeah. So do you still remember like our first impressions of each other? First impression, uh, okay, let me let me think. Uh, for Kohao, uh, first impression. Actually, he's quite shy in, in when you when you just know him in general. From, from what I can remember, uh, he was quite shy. But he's also open to share things with you unless, uh, if I can remember that time, if, uh, if you start to approach him first, that's how I feel. I can I approach you first. Huh. But then you was not very, very open yet until I mean in general everybody will be like that. Lah. You won't be so open to somebody until you know them for a few years. So you were still quite reserved in the way you, you speak and all. I I, I can feel lah. So it's just like yeah, very generic. That's interesting. Generic answers and all. But then to me it's quite nice, lah. You're quite a nice guy, lah. Mm. Yeah. Quite nice guy lah. I mean, everybody is very young and I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I would say I'm very old. I was only 21, 21 when I entered poly. So, yeah, still quite young lah. 16, eh, 16, 17. 
No, I think we were yeah, we 16, were 16, seventeen. Uh. Okay, so that's quite quite young. So <laughs> But we were like four years apart. Yeah. So like the question mark is where the four years came from. La. So then yeah. that you answer the you get answered the question was you mm. went to IT, then you went to yeah, NS. Yeah. Correct, correct. So that was the gap that we were looking for. Mm. But I think my first impression of you, like, it's like, wow, you're, you're, you're like much more older than us. Then I was a little intimidated by you a bit. Because mm. uh, I'm not a very confi- confrontational person. So mm. if I see a person like you, right, then I'm like, wow, I'm very scared of you already. No, no, no. I mean, everybody call me, like, look like Abing, la, but I don't know. La. Even my lecturers or whatever call me Abing. La. I don't know. La. Yeah, but the thing <laughs> is that, well, the thing is that people of, of, of your certain looks like this, right? Like, uh, that looks like a bit of Abeng and kind, right? Mm. Tend not to be much more nicer than they, mm. they, 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 they seem to perceive as. Mm. So, like, when, when I get to know you more, right? Mm-hmm. You actually became more of a approachable person for myself. Mm-hmm. And I think you are a very wise person. La. Okay, I mean, la, I'm okay, la, not wise. La. <laughs> still learning, still learning. We are all still learning. Mm. I mean, you eat four more years of rice of than me, so mm. I would say that uh you, you are a bit more matured than the. Mm, I, I would definitely. say we are not matured. Just that mm. we are much more. You are much more matured than us mm-hmm. when we first in year one. Though. Yes, definitely. That's yep. why, like, I kind of look up to you, but I so feel very intimidated by you in a way, mm. Because it's like I because you 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 have already went through two years of ID, and usually, right? Um, not say it's a stereotype or whatever, but I would say that. When you go through IT, right, you already have two years of experience already. Mm-hmm. And we don't have the experience, especially for myself. I don't have, um, I didn't take art in secondary school. Mm. So it's like, I don't know anything about motion graphics back then. Mm. I didn't know anything about art or design or whatever. Mm. So I always keep looking for you. Uh, mm. If you still remember, uh, so I always seek a lot of validation from you mm-hmm. that you would give me your, your five cents or your opinions about it. Hmm. And you'll guide me along and everything. Uh. So yes, correct. I think with that, like through the three years of journey in motion graphics, I was I was quite thankful to, mm-hmm. to know a person like you. Mm. Even though like we did have our little arguments or we did have our cold war back then. Mm. But I think through all these moments, we definitely have bonded. And we have definitely have matured. These la. are normal. La. Being friends, you always quarrel here and there. One. <laughs> if you always like friendly, friendly to the person, uh, that one not your friend already. You always will confirm a quarrel. One. Normal one. It's very normal. Yeah, yeah. La, I, mean, I think when we were in poly, we were in a lot of position that um, things were much more hectic mm, because mm. deadline were an issue. Yep. Then expectations set by the lecturers was really quite high. Mm. And then when, when you're dealing with friends, then you're dealing with different like working personalities. Mm. So, so some people work well, some people don't work well. So yep. then you have to find a balance. Like how do you make use of people's like um, strengths? Mm, correct. And as well as how do you embrace people's flaws? La. Correct. So I think, I think like with me and Wilson, right? Like I'm very bad at certain things and he's bad at certain things, but he's good at the things that I'm bad at. Mm. And I'm good at the things that he's very bad at. Mm. So it's like we kind of, um, I would say yin and yang in a way. Mm. So we're able to offset each other's best. I mm. uh, no, uh, offset each other's worst, but able to pull up people's uh, each other's yep, strengths. Yep, definitely, yeah. yeah. So I think that was my first impression of you mm-hmm. in general. La. So now I'm not sure if you watched the Joseph episode, mm-hmm. uh, but I think um, we also briefly mentioned about how uh, I met up with Joseph la, mm-hmm. and uh, our first impression of him and like how we first met. So he was mentioning about how um, we met um, when he was approaching us that time in the South Canteen. Okay. Not sure if you still remember not that time. Oh, very hard to remember. Really. It's been <laughs> so many years. Yeah, but he, he's, he's quite successful now, you know, as in mm-hmm. he's doing his part now. Um, shout out to him, by the way, Joseph, if you are mm-hmm. listening to this. Um, but I think that day when I was having the the, the Zoom conversation with him, the recording mm-hmm. itself, yep. well, he's so knowledgeable in what he's doing right now. And I think the transition from being a designer to, to what is he doing right now is such a brave move. Mm. And I can't imagine myself, or I, I'm sure it's also for yourself as well, mm-hmm. whether that you're able to change industry that easily. Mm. So it's it's not easy. I'm not sure that, I'm not exactly sure that he still does design, but I'm sure he still does it at his own timing la, mm. and his own like uh, passion basis la. Mm. so 
That's why I quite admire him in, mm. in a way that he is very brave at his own decision. And now that he's um, quite known of his own decision and uh, he's, he's going in this path mm. that he wants. If you are to willing do. to step out of your comfort zone and, and do what you like to do, you believe in what you are doing is right, mm. then you don't have to care about what other people think. Unless you are going, you are, you're going outside to rob a bank, la, then that's another <laughs> thing. La. Yeah, other than that, I think it's all up to your own choices in your in your path, lah. Yeah. I think one thing I didn't mention about about Joseph is that he is a very um, he doesn't really care about what people think about him. Mm-hmm. He is he just cares about himself. Mm-hmm. Not saying in a very bad way, but saying it in a way that he puts himself first, mm. which is a good thing. And sometimes, like people like us, we have to learn to put ourselves first because mm. that is a way of learning to love yourself. Yes, correct. So right. I think I'm very proud of Joseph. He found what he loves to do, and uh, I I do sincerely wish the best for him, lah. Mm. Okay, so okay, uh, just now during the the introduction, you introduce as uh, I I introduce you as a junior art director. But can yep, you tell my us, current role is that. Can you tell us more about what do you do actually? Okay, so for my role itself, in a role basis, mm-hmm. you can call it as a junior art director. Or, but the fundamentally what I do, I do motion design. So in aspect where you come from, if you're looking at a, a big company, for example, a big agency that's filled with 100 and 200 people, uh, a practical AD would actually guide and aid uh, junior motion designers mm. or designers under their path to, to create a, a kind of direction towards the end goal from the start to the end, uh, basically. But where myself, I come from a small agency, Practically, mm. we have to do uh, step zero to step 100 all together by your own self. But if you have other friends to aid you who are free on their own uh, workabout, then it's, it's a surplus. La. That's an that's a add-on. La. But then again, being an AD, one of the main thing is to know about the direction in what you want to create okay. and also what you actually want to go for. La. Basically, that's it. La. You need to know the direction very well. La. So it's like you're trying to give a certain direction to the projects and make sure everything just goes smoothly. Yes, there. correct, correct. So uh, tell us a little bit more about being an art director. So from a daily basis, what do you usually do when you step into the office? Uh, because my current company is mm-hmm. a small agency. Sure. So for, for what we do actually when we step into the office, depending on what kind of projects we have on hand, for mm-hmm. example, if you have a brief on hand really, we will actually be, be already working on it. Lah. Mm-hmm. Other than that, if we do not have any brief on hand, we'll be doing other stuff, maybe just finding our own um, design inspirations to work on or just companies, social media accounts, handling of such. Lah. Very generic stuff. Lah. Sounds like a lot of juggling to do. Uh. Um, definitely, definitely. Mm. Yeah. But then uh, if you're talking about art director, it's, to me, it's basically just a role. It's just a name there. But in the end, you got to do things that has to be done in your in your job basis lah. Yeah. So I I think I'm assuming that your role needs to do a lot of decisions rather than just doing the design itself, right? Mm, for me, because I come from a small agency, mm-hmm. like I told you two previously. So yep. I have to do from zero to a hundred, so from scratch to the end as well, with the di- directions that the brief that has been came in, or I can improvise uh, further if I have given the more um uh, further details of the project brief lah. I yeah. see, I see. So, uh, I'm assuming that now you are doing as a junior art director for about one, two years already, right? One year plus. Yeah, one year yeah. plus already. So, um, I'm sure you have worked in a lot of, um, in an environment where you are being presented with a lot of challenging briefs. Yep. So, any specific challenges that you have faced so far that you're allowed to talk to, uh, allowed to talk here? Challenges being uh, currently, there are challenges working mm-hmm. in different companies, lah. Yeah. yeah, but it doesn't need to be very specific to being mm-hmm. a, a, a junior art director. But it can be specific in terms of like your your role in terms of um uh, working in a design in uh, industry. Like. I think in terms of if you want to talk about industry wise, because mm-hmm. previously I was I came from a production uh uh background. Okay. So right now I'm I'm I've moved to an agency. So there there's a drastic change in terms of these two working environment. Mm. When we look at money wise, the pipeline of agency will definitely always come above the production house. Mm. That's why that's where you can actually earn more in a sense where people say oh agency can earn more. But then when you want to look at the work working hours, the offset and all this stuff, you might OT even more. 
but yeah, depending the on the uh, on the on the projects that's actually given la. and yeah challenges there's, there's really a lot la. it really comes here and here and there one they won't have a specific challenge that will actually be there already so only if you work for a while you actually you suddenly come yeah you won't actually know know about it yeah. oh so you were working in another company before your yeah current... i was working uh in a production house like previously mm. so what how is the transition like because i think when you're working in uh in the production house you were just a motion graphics designer yes correct so then now you are a, a junior art director uh how is the transition like uh what are the things that you have to face while you know you're transiting to a to a, art, a junior art director. So to share in a more generic view, mm-hmm. when I came f- as a motion designer mm-hmm. from production house, I want to learn more about uh, skills upgrading, technical upgrading, what can I actually do in the motion graphic industry. Production mm-hmm. house are basically, we do whatever and ever that can be done. But then as a motion designer, we can, for, for, my, for my own background, my previous company allowed me to have a bit of creation in what I, I do which I really enjoy and love wow. and but then again there are some times when we are talking about specific direction that we can actually propose right in mm. as a as a motion designer I have my limits to what I can actually propose la. this mm. is what I feel yeah. I feel it might be different for other companies so that that that's the, that varies when it goes into agency but it does not mean that when you go to agency you can have full 100% uh, spectrum of what you want to say and people must listen to you must also go through to your direct superiors your bosses creative directors as well mm. so you need to see how to work it around uh, for all these things but being a junior art director do you think that you have more flexibility in doing things yes definitely being a <coughs> junior AD you definitely have more flexibility in doing mm. your things having your say because you have that role yeah. so you need to know your shit you know what I mean <laughs> you gotta know your shit Yes. Before you even propose something, if you don't, if you propose something and that doesn't work, for one time maybe you can still pass. For second time, third time, you keep repeating the same thing by proposing something that shouldn't work. Then that's another thing. But then you can propose; mm. it may work on you. But then again, the proposal might not work on your superiors or anybody who who might be the one that will be clearing your your objectives, lah. So. There are a lot of complications when you talk about that. So, I, I agree, yeah. I agree. I think it's not just thinking about what your superior really wants, mm. but it's also about the client. Yes, definitely. Because at the end of the day, the client is the king. Yes. When you're when you are an art director, in a sense, you must juggle in between not just design, direction, mm. your superior's comments, client's comments, and how can this uh, design brief work according to their uh client brief background so you must really tally up all together nicely yep that's wow. how that's how I, I, say. I i don't know how you're able to expect um, uh, how you're able to um exceed everybody's expectations uh, especially like you have to deal with the client you have to deal with your own boss then i'm assuming you're i mean you're in a man, uh, manageable uh, position so you have to deal with um you know managing your own team as well so yeah I, I'm sure it must be difficult uh, trying to man- manage a lot of people. Uh. Not a lot. Uh. My company is quite small. Yeah, uh. Small, uh, but yeah. it's still... Uh, we work with one another in mm. between our own company. Uh. So we just help each other. I just would say we help as a small company. For now, my agency is quite small. So we help one another as much as we can. Uh. Yeah. So for example, in a contrast, if you are in a 100 to 200 people agency, right? that's different. When yeah. you're talking about that, right? you will only be working in a small spectrum of what you do. Yes. Because there's so many people, everybody will be doing and their own projects specific things. Yeah. So you'll be only doing that one thing. Mm. When you're talking about a small agency, you basically have to do, like I mentioned earlier, zero to a hundred, then get everything. Yeah. So like, you just you just see more of the process. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. After day. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, now I learned a bit more about mm. what you actually do. La. Um, now, just from your um, bio description, um, I mentioned that uh, you came from a background where your education wasn't that fantastic mm. from the beginning. Uh. So um, remind us, now that you're quite, not say uh, very successful, but they say now, now you're very yeah, comfortable. Not successful, la, still you're going, just comfortable la. what you're mm. doing. La, so um, remind us what was your PSLE score? Oh, my PSLE <laughs> score. I believe there are people who are still lower than me, <laughs> but my PSLE score is 98. 
Okay, I will flash the result here right now. Take a look. <laughs> 98. Okay. Okay, so as you can see um, from Wilson's um, PSLE score, he got a 98. Uh, for myself, um, I did slightly better. Slightly is an is a understatement, la, it's an exaggeration, la, but I did it around <coughs> 193. Wow, that's very high. Super yeah, high. But to him, it's high, but to my perspective itself, right, it's already quite low. La. Okay. So that's why I don't want to. I want. I want. I. I don't want to sound as if like I'm comparing results mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. But I think what we can take away is that um, PSLE results mm. doesn't define what you do in the future. Yeah, it doesn't define. So tell us the journey. Like, how do you become from? Um, did you did very badly for your PSLE, and then slowly you did quite well in what you're doing right now, la. Okay. I, w- I wouldn't okay we'll start with that in general I wouldn't actually say I was actually quite successful in a way mm. in, a, in a sense whereby you also need connections you need friends who are there to actually be there to help and guide you along luck is also part of it I, w- yes. I, w- I would say okay so now I go back to all the way from the from young la. come from a from a time whereby I, I'm, ni- I'm 27 la. so I'm born in 1993 one, you come yeah. from a generation whereby there's this movie called Xiao Hai Pupen. Oh, that movie. By Jack Neo. Yes, okay, it Jack was Neo. it was very famous in a sense whereby it got hyped. People would look down onto EM3 students last time. Hmm. We have a thing called EM3 last time. Yes. Yeah, Normal, uh, we have Express Stream, EM1. Normal cap EM2. And EM3 is for normal technical students. Normal technical students are confirmed to be go to ITE. Mm. Yes, unless during your secondary three, you if I don't remember wrongly, you, you can promote or whatever. You can promote to mm. normal acad, but you have to study five years, go five yes. years. So that's what I remember. So during my my time having a PSLE of ninety eight, I went to secondary school already deemed to be an EM three student. Mm-hmm. I only have five basic subjects to learn: uh, English, Maths, Science, Chinese. And CPA, which is CPA, what com- is that? Computer applications. Oh, yes. So okay. I only have five basic, uh, different courses through secondary school, la. Mm. Yeah, I'm the the worst topic that I I do not like to study, which is I think maybe everyone is the same as me. Maths, I failed maths since primary one. I have never passed passed them. I, I did very well for maths. Okay, uh, okay. sure. <laughs> then other than that, I do well in computer applications, la. So okay. what do we do in CPA is just a uh, basic. Microsoft Word, oh. Microsoft Excel, just let you know more about computer applications. La. Mm. Like that's, that's as little as it is. La. So from there, in terms of studying, I do not enjoy studying as much. My parents mm. also forced me to go tuition. I run away and all this stuff. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not because I'm, I don't have the power to, to dive the kind of knowledge into my brain. And okay. to the extent itself, because last time this sort of tuition things, right? Tuition centers, they do not have um knowledge to guide EM3 students in terms of their course subject. They they only have prepared um tests and quiz or whatever knowledge for express students. So my parents sign up for those that are for express and normal acad. They don't mm. have options for EM3. There's no such thing as an EM3 tuition course from my, my time, I remember. So I, I do not like going tuition at all. Okay. Like. It doesn't benefit me and I mean, I'm in school, secondary school. I do not, I cannot digest any work or, or whatever uh, knowledge that's coming from the lecturer's mouth. La. So as much as I can get, it's just a normal uh, 60 to 100 score, 70 is a max. La. I can mm. never get 80. La. Only for CPA, I could get 90 plus or 100. Of course, you love computers. Yeah, I love computer. <laughs> so from there on, uh, Primary school, secondary school is just a shithole. Uh. Yeah. Mm. We, we just been through whatever that's been planned for us to go because as an EM3 student, it's not always very easy. Uh, you know what I mean? Yes. Mm. So from secondary school, I after sec 4, I have to go ITE, which is a definitely thing. Uh. I was thinking about where should I go to into mm. this industry because in ITE, we have to pick a course. You see, my time... Or right now we it's the same like we pick a course where we want to do plan to do in the future. Yeah. So, so yeah. one of my yeah, options cut. was mm. actually to be a chef. Oh seriously. I was planning to be to go to culinary school. 
uh, culinary skill. I don't know my English a bit kiam chai. Uh, you guys can correct me. <laughs> okay, so, so he wanted to be a chef. Yes, so a yeah, chef. that's just the most important thing. Then okay. uh, after that, my second options, I I I look at animation. Okay. Okay. My third option, I was actually looking at a uh, retail la, retail. But then oh, in, wow. in the end, uh, because my 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 interest for such thing was was in a way whereby I like to see uh cartoon not cartoon la, but yeah, cartoon a- animation, and la, animation, yeah, animation uh manga or whatever la. last time mm. there's Naruto and all this stuff. So I was more intrigued into animation in a sense. I see. Yeah. Okay, we, we backtrack into the, the chef part. Mm. I was actually going for the chef, but in the end I didn't go for that. Why? Because you need to have money to buy the ingredients so you can cook and source the kind of um, um taste or whatever that you like like for yes. the dishes. So I do not have that kind of incentive for myself to go and DI all this cook. Or a lot of experimentations. La, I would yeah, say. so in the end, I just went for to, to be an animation student la, in ITE. Mm. I was actually located um in Macpherson. It was ITE Macpherson, the very old one. Now you go uh, Macpherson. Close really, yeah. Uh, it's empty land, green land. No more already. <laughs> green land. Just opposite uh, Transcom Police Station. Yeah. Okay, sure. So we go there. It was a fun time la, in ITE. I met a lot of great friends and I still mm. connect them. Yeah, even till now la, we are still connecting. So wow. Yeah, it was very, very close with them la, for my ITE friends. Mm, after that I moved on to Army. I was actually intending to go poly first, but then when I went after my my IT, I I graduated already. I was planning to go to poly, but we cannot defer la. Wait, so for ITE, I have to go NITEC. For normal people wise, you think about NITEC mm-hmm. and to higher NITEC, then you go poly. But then oh. because of my course NITEC in animation. I can go through a direct admission through portfolio scheme okay. to motion graphics in NYP, which is the scheme they're offering through portfolio basis. Mm. That's hence is why I could actually go to poly by using NITEC cert and not a higher NITEC cert. That is the difference. Okay. But basic people will have to study to higher NITEC by using just the score the, 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 the overall ITE score that you can achieve la. Mm. yeah but because this is an enhanced one where you have to consider in the portfolio so with that I could get into poly la. so correct me if I'm wrong mm. if you want to go to poly as an ITE student you have to go through NITEC and another two more years in high NITEC yes correct so, so that's total of four years of ITE then you can go poly but it's not guaranteed also, right? Because, it's not guaranteed. Yeah, because it's depending on your, your score, la, so it's same as uh, yes, from correct. poly to, to like university. Like your GPA, yeah, la, for example, correct. like your GPA. But I didn't know about this high NITEC thing because I was quite curious what is high NITEC all about because I don't have much friends from IT. So I think yeah, you're the first person to educate me about this. La. High NITEC. Actually, if you ask me, I, I didn't read up high NITEC as much. But from mm. what I know, it's like... Um, it's an like advanced course. It's an like advanced it? course mm. where you need to get then you can get into poly there is a requirement there okay. you must go higher NITEC yeah is it very competitive in ITE no as in higher net uh, transiting from higher NITEC to poly oh I'm not for higher NITEC I'm okay but you, like, have you heard from your friends is it competitive because I came from portfolio basis so uh, the port over rate it depends it depends because it depends, not many right? of my friends came to motion graphic as like me. I'm the only one uh, yeah. for my course. Yeah. And also a few of your seniors as well. Yeah, a few of my seniors as yeah, well. Yeah. Seniors they are also well. from my, my IT IT course as well, where they are studying animation hmm. and they came over to motion graphics in NYP as well. Uh. Okay, so now now back to your story. Um you went through NITEC and then hmm. uh, you went through like a portfolio exercise and you was, at, at the end of the day, of course, you succeeded and you were in bro- uh, motion graphics and broadcast design. So how was your three years in um, in that diploma course? And after that, what's happened? what has happened to you after that three years? Diploma course for motion graphics? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, for three years, I think it's actually quite fruitful. Hmm. Okay, in a sense whereby I came from an animation background. I can do animation, I can draw. I may not be the best, okay. but I still learn and progress in my three years of polytechnic in, in learning. La. But then one of the very key things that I've learned was actually design principles 
in motion graphics and broadcast media design, which was the the old name lah. Now I think they changed the name already. Yeah, motion graphics design. Yeah, so yeah. design was a big factor that I have to learn in terms of a uh, gestalt theory and all those different oh. technical design <laughs> terms lah. So part of that actually helped to grow how animation or design animation, which is also called motion design, is actually yes. to be about, and yeah, help me grow from there lah. I think one thing I really came mm. to learn from the course is not just design, but also design with a purpose. Yes, definitely. Design correct. with a reason. So that's why I don't like to just oh design or because I, okay, I don't come from a design background. So my designs are very bad in the first place. Mm. So I usually like to portray my creative um, senses through um, photos and videos. Mm-hmm. So I I want to make sure that whenever I take a photo, whenever I take a video, it must have some purpose behind it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm sure it's the mm-hmm. same as for mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. When you when you do an illustration, when you do animation, when you do 3D, mm-hmm. of course, it must have some purpose behind mm-hmm. it. It cannot be just, oh, it's nice, that's why I gotta do this. Mm-hmm. Because let's be honest, anybody can do that. Mm-hmm. What sets people different is the story itself. Mm-hmm. But then the... I will also see differently whereby when you are in the creative part of a zone where you are exploring, mm. do not limit yourself in creating on a single topic. So what I mean by yes, that is whereby you true. can just free zone, throw out and do whatever that you want to create. You mm. might end, end up yourself in somewhere you didn't know in the first place because mm. In design, in, in design factor itself, we do not restrict ourselves when you are in the creative zone of process. Once you start restricting your your your, your process, your result will be something that is being restricted. Hmm. Unless you are doing a curated brief, a design proposal, then that is supposed to be. Uh, you need to explore as uh, much as you can uh, with the guideline. We when you are, if you have a given brief itself, you have to be stick to the yes. guideline. Yeah. Other than that, if you are in the creative process, then you can just zone out and throw do whatever you want. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, this kind of principles mm. we we learn it through when our mm. when, when, mm. when we were in poly la. Mm. and one thing that we should be very thankful is for the lecturers are they mm, definitely patiently taught us all of this. Uh. Our lecturers are really very knowledgeable. All of them. Mm. Mm. We have designed, you know, lo- uh, knowledge and your experience mm. and everything. So I think one thing that uh, I have learned about you is that you are very experienced in what you're doing. Mm. Not say very, but as in you're very knowledgeable and also you're quite good at what you're doing. But at the same time as that, uh, you also earned the opportunity to go to Hong Kong. Mm. I was given uh, one opportunity to go to Hong Kong. Yep. Yeah. Of course, uh, we can't say the company name, of course. Uh, that's, not, that's not the point, but... The point is the experience. Mm. So, of course, how was it like having your internship at Hong Kong? How was the culture like? How was living alone like? And all that kind of stuff. Okay, then we talk about living in Hong Kong or I would say living in, anything, a, in, anything. A, in a country yeah. all by yourself la, for internship-wise. La. Mm. It was, to me, I was definitely very thankful that I'm actually being selected to go overseas to actually intern and all this stuff. But then going there alone for three months was something that was quite new to me. So in a way, I have to adapt or anybody who have given this choice, you have to adapt to what you are actually being given to. If you don't adapt, then you got to be somewhere already. Yes. So when I'm in Hong Kong itself, to me, Hong Kong is one thing. I love the culture. It was very rich. I love the food. I mean, maybe Singapore don't have a lot of nice Hong Kong food, but Hong Kong food, some of them are really, very nice. I remember you came back a little fatter. Eh? No, I came back skinnier. Skinnier? Yeah, because, because I, I don't have much money that time. Okay. Ah, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I have a Hong Kong friend listening. If you listen. <laughs> hey, Lorraine, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, so, so basically going to Hong Kong, uh, in terms of the working, working-wise, is that's all part another thing. La, but the lifestyle-wise, to me, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Why? Because Hong Kong is something that, that the one one big difference which I like about Hong Kong, they have mountains. Singapore do not have mountains. We, we do have we, a mountain. We only have hill. No, it's called Mount Favor. That's not a mountain. <laughs> Singapore is not a mountain. We do Singapore. we have zero mountain in Singapore. Okay, okay but to be fair, Bukit Timah Hill is quite uh, it's, a, it's just a hill. It's just yeah. not a mountain. <laughs> yeah, la, but okay. still. So so what that's one of the main things where I love hiking. That's where I really love hiking from there. La. Okay. 
and and they have very big cities where I can explore from not not like Singapore for example in context Jurong to Pasir Ris you can travel in like one hour and thirty minutes max mm. you can visit. And that's what I mean by Singapore is an isolated zone because you can travel everywhere just within that one day. And, and it's, it's very... It gets boring in a while. But when in Hong Kong, for me, it was my first time there, right? It's quite an eye-opener. I could see a lot of different of things. Not just be, food, yeah. cultures, rich in everything where, where I go. La. So it's, a, it's the kind of things that entice me. La. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. So how about your living condition there? So I'm living assuming it'll be condition. quite expensive there, right? Okay, for my expense, I can disclose this. I <laughs> actually paid around six thousand dollars for three months. Yep. So it's two thousand Singapore dollars per month. Singapore so it's six thousand for three months, Sing dollars. Mm. Okay. We we can't blame that that their house is small or whatever, but because it is how it's being um yeah, their, their country is, is being brought up like this, but what, what can we do? So we just have to adapt. La. So that's what have been gone through by me. La. Mm. Uh, the living space for me was actually quite small. It's not as small as what you see online, like a cage or whatever, but at least for mine, it was... Uh, it was comfortable? It was comfortable. But the walking space itself, I could actually walk just four steps, la, basically. <laughs> just four steps, then, and that's it. La. Huh? Yeah, four steps. It was just four steps and one single bed. That's all. Uh, double it, bed. It was double bed, not single bed. Okay. Yeah, but it was just four steps. One, two, three, four. Then you're done. So no more space. Huh. So okay. Wait. That time when you're doing internship, right? Were you alone or were you with somebody else? Alone. I was alone. Alone. All alone. The other batches was with somebody else, lah. Yep. Yep. Correct. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. I was all alone there. Eh. But do you find it like a? Do you find it? I'm not sure if I should be asking this, lah. But do you find it? Lonely at times, especially when you're not traveling lonely, with a class. Definitely lah, definitely yeah. lah. Because this was my first time traveling and to stay in some place for three months, the loneliness mm. definitely will come lah. I mean, I believe my other seniors they they travel with their friends or or yeah. even my classmate. Maybe they got some a company, but to me, it's just alone. I'm sure you'll be much more different uh, especially to your experience wise if mm. you were traveling with a classmate or yeah, especially within much our more. batch uh, because if you were ask me honestly you'll definitely be much more happier when you have someone being with you so you can enjoy the, the happiness or whatever crazy things that's happening down there but I think it depends on the who is the person we're talking about yeah, yeah definitely we, it, depends. We know, it depends we know who you're talking about uh, Bison. Um, the, the person that you will be going with for the internship experience mm. overseas especially. a companion for that will always be nice I yeah, would say always yeah. be nice always be nice but depending on who's the person yeah. that they were yeah. talking about correct but I think most importantly is that uh, yeah companion is always nice at least to make sure that you don't go insane there la, alone yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think imagining like at the time when you went to Hong Kong which month was it exactly oh let me think uh. I think I've been I went there uh was June, it? June, July, August. Ah. June, July. August. Oh yeah, correct, correct, correct. It was, it was around May because to August. Because I spent yeah. my birthday there. I spent my birthday there. June was my birthday. So I, I, sp- I think it was around May, June, July. I, I, rem- I remember when was my internship was. It was around May to August. So it's around that time period, right? Yeah, around, that time, around that time. So oh, it- yeah, around that time. Because uh, when it was during National Day, National- Singapore National Day, I was still in Hong Kong. So Ju- Ju- or August, ma. Yeah, we, I mean, we can talk. We can talk briefly about National mm-hmm. Day because um, the both of us were involved in the National Day project. Mm-hmm. So um, because we're still students, uh, so we were, had the opportunity to do it mm-hmm. as our final year project. Mm-hmm. So I think being part of this project was really, really an eye opener. Yeah, it's eye opener. You're Maybe, working in a whole national stage. Yes, mm-hmm. that's one. But also because it's like to us, it's like our first big, big client mm-hmm. as a student because. Let's be honest, if you're a student, right? Um, what kind of clients can you really get? Mm. Some some sort of SME or whatever. But to get at this kind of stage and this kind of um, uh, a very big um, organization to work with for our FYP, right? I think mm. it's, it was just an eye-opener lah because it's the same as how we are doing for our own design projects. So shout out to all the seniors who yeah. passed the word. If not, lah, we would not be able to do National Day Parade graphic visuals. It's actually all thanks to our seniors and our lecturers as well who brought in the opportunity and the seniors who have been doing all the good stuff for us. That's where all the juniors and including us 
in the timeline we could actually be doing all these nice visuals for them lah. Yes. So we are actually also proud of it. Yes, we are we're definitely very thankful mm. for the seniors, especially the juniors, having able to you know continue the tradition that they're still doing the motion graphics mm. for NDP. La. So uh let me if I'm not clear enough, let me just say this again. Um in case if you are watching National Day Parade, uh the visuals at the um the panels, the the the, the uh, LED panels are usually done what say not usually uh, some uh, some parts uh, some of parts it. La, mm. depending on the brief and how much they're given for each year because some years is one act or two acts some parts is mm. throughout the entire show mm. so it's depending on the brief mm. but I think Correct. for ours was the first two acts mm. uh, I'm not sure about this year's one uh, but I think um, depending on the year itself like what they do la, mm. I think Correct. yeah so in case I, I uh, sorry in case if I didn't make it very clear like uh, some of the, um, the the graphics that you see on on not just television but also on site itself at the National Day Parade the panels itself is, is done by motion graphics design now that's the course name but back then it was done by motion graphics mm. and podcast design so I think with that we are very grateful for the seniors and also the, the juniors to continue on this 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 uh, baton uh, so mm. it's not easy for them to, to continue on uh. but speaking about National Day Parade um, you missed it uh, because mm-hmm. we had a chance to see it in real life yeah but I see it on video on you my see laptop. On video, laptop. Mm. So it's it's quite sad for you lah because yeah, very sad. you were the one that kind of um I would say that you give us direction on what to do also, like what you're doing today in a way. Mm. Yeah, in a sense, uh, in a sense. Yeah, uh, yeah. So technically your art direction really came from Paul po- po- uh, in a way. Uh, Here and there, <laughs> we all we all need to art direction wise to me is a is a thing whereby have everybody learn, would, uh. would go on through in a sense even if it's a self-proposed project you have to give your own direction and all. but in the end if your direction is actually guided towards that, that brief or that project purpose then I mean that is that should be should be correct la. unless yep. you are giving a false direction for example you want to sell an apple but your direction is to selling an orange so that's another thing so you have to be correct and to be kind of learn to be clear in a sense lah. I'm still learning you know? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the best so, okay yeah. I think within us that you are just more mature and you are yep. just more experienced than us correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why we kind of look up to you in a mm. way lor. so I think okay now uh, coming to the timeline itself so we are talking about our FYP and our, our internship experience by the way and then after that is graduation I think you graduate with um, with a pretty good GPA I would say 3.8 something ah. Uh. Which is quite impressive, by the way. Yeah, considering like. where you came from and and now that you're mm, in po- mm. uh, now that previously you're from poly, you graduate with such a very high GPA. Actually, you could have went for university, by the way. You know. Mm, mm, mm. I know but, there are there are university who invited me after uh after I graduated. Yeah. You had scholarships, I believe, right? Uh, Scholarship. Yeah, it's scholarships. It's scholarships. Yeah, scholarships correct. Yeah. Scholarship. But I was actually I already signed to a company before. Uh, our graduation show so I was so as I, I was actually I really got a full time job la, after that uh, before I even graduated so oh, that's yeah. why I didn't go uni you mentioned uh, about this as yeah. well so you are quite lucky to to have that opportunity right at the gate uh, at, at, at the uh, the fusion showcase by the way so I think it, mm. it was it was really it was by luck la. it was by luck la. it's luck la. I mean mm. one thing is luck but at the same time I said your portfolio itself was pretty impressive at that time as well Okay lah, still yeah, okay. Yeah, la. it was quite impressive. So that's why, mm. yeah, I think you're you're quite. Uh, I would say that you, you, you stumble upon this opportunity that I think mm. not a lot of students really get lah, especially because mm. I think, uh, I think some of our uh, some like me and some of our classmates like, uh, in in the course itself, mm. or I think also other courses as well, mm. they kind of struggled to mm. get a job even like during the uh, Fusion Showcase mm. but also like even after the showcase right I think like one two years they may not find something very stable la. so mm. I think you're just one of the more like um, lucky la, luckier lucky ones la. La. Mm. and not just lucky but also like one of the more impressive ones as okay well la, okay la. so then like uh, anything to share about your journey after that? For, from where? from after your Fusion Showcase after you graduate Okay, so basically, mm-hmm. I got a chance and lucky enough to be introduced to one company. I wouldn't say what company. Course, la. course, so yeah. basically, you just go work full time mm. to have a contract even before I graduate. That was one thing really. So after that, um, I didn't go uni. That's another thing. I went to work full time. The solely purpose is because I want to gain more experience 
and to learn more about my industry, motion design. And I have one, I have someone who I always look after, look, after, look up to is Alibaba. In terms ah, of Alibaba yes. is his vision. How is his vision is, is whereby he tell the younger generation people to start off with, to learn with every other different people. In terms of working environment, we want to work in a small different, small environment first to learn about how individual work and how people actually move around and all this stuff. Then after that, when you are more experienced, for example, uh, I remember Alibaba have an age group. So maybe 20, 25 or 20, 30. So maybe when you are 30 to 40, you should actually be more experienced to know what you actually should be doing to continue strive forward and do what you are good at. Then when um, you are 40 to 50, you should actually be giving the chances to the younger one. But then again, you might, if you have enough money, you can you can retire lah. If you no no have enough money, you can still be continue to working. Like for Singapore context, there's a lot of elderly who are still working. So mm. this principle might not apply to everybody, but it is just something where I look look up to lah. We have a goal somewhere in mind lah. Yeah. I see. I see. But I... then when we are at an age where we go back, for example, twenty to thirty years old, you should actually be from Alibaba Vision. You should actually be learning and looking at everything that you have on hand start exploring yeah until you think that you want to deem fit into one specific thing that you think that you might you have a strong interest in then you start to go in depth into it yeah is there like any other um people or organizations that you look up to besides alibaba like who inspires you especially Alibaba inspires me because of how he managed his businesses and mm. his vision to to look at um uh, business in general la. Okay. But if I if I have different di- um men- not say mentors people who I look up to for example when you're looking into tech, mm. digital tech, okay, it's actually by Tesla the the boss the oh, founder yeah, of Tesla Musk. Elon Musk yeah. so how he actually push his limits. I mean, he got money, so that's another thing. <laughs> Push his limits into futuristic tech, tech stuff, la, into satellites, into spaceship, uh, cars and, and trucks and bus and all this stuff. So, yeah, these people around the world. La. I see, I see. Mm. Okay, um, now just now coming back to your, your journey as an art director, okay. uh, um, junior art director, um, is there anything that you wish you have known uh, prior to becoming a motion graphics designer or a junior art director? Okay. Because junior art director to me is just a role, but fundamentally, you are still doing motion design, right? Yes. But if you ask me what I would like to know, I would wish to know before I start, is it? Yes. Things that you wish you have known. Huh? To me, to me, to me, right, that, that, that is more of like, we, we, because we cannot predict what's coming in the future. So yeah. we can only learn and adapt through the different stage of environment when you are, you are growing. La. So there are things whereby you might not know that it's going to come. So you just got to gotta be adaptive enough. La. That's why I would, I, would, I would say adaptive is, is one of the very important things. So you wish mm. that you'll be more adaptive um, when you're younger mm-hmm. la, especially. Because for example, when we started off as a creative, we might be standalone whereby oh I want to do this specific thing mm. only because I'm very good at it for example Kok Hao he, he, he's very good in pre- his presentation skills he's very good in filming photography okay. he might be you, you might be very into filming and photography only but you might not know that you can actually sell a product for example you can sell this soy soybean <laughs> product so that is something where you need to be adaptive to actually try yeah, so yeah. Yoast and FNN, if you're hearing this, please sponsor <laughs> us. Uh, I would love to have a sponsor, and we don't hey, have a sponsor for this FNN, season yet. Man. FNN. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyway, yeah. So I think, uh, being adaptive is mm. is, is being one, and also the ability to to be vocal and uh, ability to to sell things, like I think mm, mm. things that yes. I, I, I'm assuming that you things that you mm, wish you mm, have learned, lah. Mm. Okay, great. So, any other tips that you may want to share to people out there who wants to be in your position right now? If you want to be, uh, fundamentally, you want to be a motion designer, uh, then move forward to an AD-wise. I think, because I won't say that I'm the best art director, I'm the best motion designer around, but mm. it's more about how you could actually 
um, put yourself in a situation whereby you can be adaptive, like I keep mentioning previously, be adaptive to any situation that's happening. For example, if you are looking at motion graphic designer, you, I wouldn't say design has a sole purpose of that that structure there. So what I mean by that, it's very complex. What I mean is that okay, design that. can be look. 1,000 people look at one design, there'll be 1,000 different comments from that. It might look different from 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. So design is very, uh, how do I say that? Um, it's not to, it's not one answer to fit all. Of course, there's, there's going to be a So you just do right, what uh. you think, it looks nice. Mm. And also fits the brief. Then that's where you can actually start to move forward as a motion designer. To have a nice, nice uh, portfolio piece, looks nice visually, stunning, looks good, fits the brief. Slowly push ahead with your technical skill set, not just in 3D, 2D, whatever it is. But then again, when maybe you're working for three, four, five years, you want to move into, you want to up your role to become a senior or become a AD wise. You have to learn new things, learn new things whereby you have to learn your PR skills, how to communicate with internal group projects, how to actually look at briefs be more vocal, like like Koho mentioned. Mm. Mm, yeah, these are things you have to be adaptive to learn uh, here and there. So, yeah. I'm, I'm a, so what I'm taking away from what you mentioned is mm. just be be willing to learn things. Yes, uh, definitely. You know. Because in the end, it's always a learning journey. Uh. I won't say that, oh, because I'm an AD now, I stop here. Yeah. Uh, I may become a taxi driver uh, 10 years <laughs> later, who knows? So we, we just learn. Uh. Yeah, just learn. <laughs> okay, I think that, that's a great tip. That's a great tip. Uh, so if you're listening out there, so... Uh, just take take what Wilson has mentioned. I think you, uh, if you are expiring motion graphics designer or you know, if you are trying to become an art director, so I think what you mentioned is really can apply to mm. anybody in general, not mm. just anybody who who wants to be in this in this industry la, There's a lot of factors that that goes into that la, Because if for example you want to look into going into different uh, job roles, for example you want to be a senior, you want to be mm. AD or senior AD or be a creative director or whatever, those. You have to consider into the companies that you're looking into, the opportunities that's actually out there, connections, luck. Yeah, so all of these things are, are part of it, la, generally. La. Yeah. Okay. Um, of course, we ask this question also uh, to most of our guests. Uh, what's next in your life? Um, let's just say in the next maybe five years or maybe next 10 years or something. What's next in my life? La? Technically, I, I haven't know, know the, the end result yet. So is it now becoming to a senior art director? Ah uh, no no no. <laughs> the, to me that is just a role. If you're a senior it's or but, a role, but then uh. everybody in a sense, for example, if you are working full time, everybody want to have a higher pay, a better course, pay. Because yeah. Singapore or any other places, if we are all sandwich class, like for example, sandwich class is we are in the middle of, of the economy. We are being squashed by the top and the bottom. So we gotta do what we gotta do, la. Hey, but at, at a young age of twenty seven, I think what you're doing so far, you're doing quite well. 27 la, 28 next year eh. one, one more month 28 one more month, next year eh. okay then have a happy advanced birthday oh, then, I la, eh, oh, eh. <laughs> but then but then yeah la, we just we just move and adapt and do what we can la. Yeah. yeah do what you can la. so just 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 be happy la. Mm, just yeah. be happy like what Kohal say okay um, of course before we end on this episode we do have a little quick segment uh, it's called Insta Copy and uh, through our Instagram account at Limkopi Podcast, we have asked through an Instagram story if we have any questions for Wilson, this guy himself. And of course, um, we do have three questions that we came in. Um, but the first question is not really a question, but it's just a comment from um, Joseph. You will still remember him. Of okay. course, uh, I remember. I remember Joseph. Yeah, Joseph Lee from episode two. He was just mentioning about uh, he has no questions to ask you, but he wants to commend you for okay. your brilliant work so far, la. Mm. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, so if you're watching this again, Joseph, thank you so much for the question. Well, not really a question, but thank you for a comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's an anonymous viewer that came in. Uh, of course, I can't mention the name. Um, they did ask this very simple question. Uh, where do you get your motivation from and what kept you going when times are difficult? So when, what kept me, what gave me motivation uh, when I'm actually down on my works and all. So usually, these are things whereby, for example, for example, when we look at, when we look at every individual, we might have different perspective in what actually helps us and aid us in life. But for mm -hmm. me, at least, I have listened to podcasts 
from Ashtop Collective Podcast. You so can listen to this as well. Sorry? You can listen to oh, this yeah, podcast as well. Listen to Insta <laughs> Copy also. So so basically for me in, in, in a sense, I listen to podcasts. One of it listen to podcasts from Ashtop. So okay, he invite yeah. guests from industry, from motion design industry, advertising industry to talk mm. about their life and experience and what I'm doing right now. They will also talk about their own problems, how they actually settle for example, some of them can actually advise you to go to the park, maybe look at the greenery small, look at mm. the scenery small, rather than staying in your own computer zone. So, basically, just go and walk more. La. So, that is one of the takeaways that I learned. Mm. Mm. That's cool, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, we do have another question. Uh, her name is Colleen. Um, she's our best friend. Okay, Colleen. Yes, Colleen, thank you for your question, by the way. Um, we She's asked this question. It's a very simple question. So how do you make it as a junior art director this early or this soon into your career? And do you have any other tips that you can share about this? I think you just have to, like I mentioned previously, it's more about opportunity that's given forward. And with that, if you have an opportunity, you look at the opportunity you have here, you mm. need to have... I won't say my portfolio is the best, but you need to have a convincing portfolio to show people that you fit that role. Mm. And you have the experience from there. La. I won't say that, oh, I have a 10, 20 years experience. Maybe from my for from my own sake, my production house from my previous company gave me a good foundation, which I appreciate a lot. And when I move forward into the agency, which I, I got into this role. So this is just, like I like mentioned, is opportunity and luck. And another part is just a bit of your hard work here and there. I think one thing yeah. to add on with with this what you mentioned about mm. is that doesn't mean two to three years means it's early for somebody. It can just mean that this person has really done a lot. Especially but if you if you ask about my timeline, it was about four close to four years. Then I have came to be a junior AD yes, to correct. given this opportunity. Yeah, so it's not one to two years. One to two years, I don't think anybody will get. La. Maybe around f- my... From what I see, it should be around four to five years. You should be actually be promoted to somewhere. If you are being stagnant off... From what I view, if you are being stagnant off as just a single singular role for four to five years, you should be looking somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, but, but then again, what I'm trying to say is that... Um, people weigh years as how they view as uh, uh, how they value years as well. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean that uh, four to five years means that you are an experienced person, or doesn't mean that you're not so experienced. It just depending on what you actually really do during that yep, uh, yep. that four to five years. Mm-hmm. I can say that for myself, a, I've been creating videos for ten years already. But what have I actually achieved for that mm. 10 years? Yes, correct. I can just say, oh, I've done YouTube videos for 10 years, but what have I done actually? So I think that is something that you have to consider yourself. Like, mm. what have you ever done for your mm. for, 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 for that five, four to five years mm. into your career? Definitely. So if it has been very fruitful, of course, then it has a it's, it's a good time spent. Mm. If you haven't done something much, I would say that um the four or five years could be just time wasted itself. Mm, la. Mm. So I think um I'll, if I do give my five cents, it's a bit about um trying to be, you know, just improve of your skill sets la, yes. while you have the time to do Correct. so. At the same time, uh, just make sure that you have the connections as well because I think connections is it's really important to have, mm. especially in this industry. Mm, definitely. Um, if you have friends or not that, just keep making friends. Uh, you never know who can help you or who can assist you to make your next big jump mm. and wherever mm. you go. Mm. So I think, Joe, um, I think from what um, Wilson has mentioned, uh, like he's very grateful for, for his previous employer's opportunity mm. to give him his ex, uh, the experience that he's needed for his current job right now. Mm. So that's why I mentioned that it's depending on opportunities, opportunities as well as luck. Luck and, and your hard work and all this stuff. Hard work. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have come to the end of this episode. Uh, thank you so much, Wilson. No problem. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this so far. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Okay, so I will ask this question to anybody uh, that have come by to this podcast. Um, how can our viewers you know, connect with you online? Connect with me online. Uh, maybe if you want, if you want to know more about the creative industry or things that I have not mentioned through this podcast, and you want to know it more privately, just DM me on my Instagram link uh, at here. Yes. Here. <laughs> okay, you can just mention the name. At <laughs> Lee Sang Wilson. L E E S A N G W I R S O N. You still like Lisa a lot, la. Yeah, Lisa, man. Yeah, la. 
answer is Lisan, um, Wilson, any other platforms or just the only one? Uh, yeah, you can just DM me on Instagram. Okay, sure. Uh, of course, uh, if, if, uh, if you want to check him out, of course, just um, details are in the description box below mm. uh, from the respective platforms. Or if you are watching this on YouTube, it's on the screen right now. Uh, any other last words you want to mention? No last words. Very thankful for all these years of opportunity given and all this stuff. La. It was also opportunity given by Kokhao to come to his podcast, which I'm also very thankful. La. So do you feel the stress being uh, the first episode guest in a new season? No, I'm not sure. He's my friend. I talk to him. Like, I always talk to him. Normal, really? Right? I talk to him. Like, Where's yeah, the vulgarity? Yeah, he tell me, he say cannot say vulgar. Eh? This one cannot say. La. Okay la, okay, la, okay. <laughs> no la, no la, la. I think okay la, I, I'm I'm just very appreciative to know you as a, as a friend. La, you know. Okay, anyway, thank you so much for watching uh, this episode of the Live Gopi Podcast. My name is Kokao, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye, bye.